Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, today a new uh, report just came out from the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Um, it's part of the AR6, which is Assessment Report 6, and it's the Synthesis Report, it's called. And this is a very significant report and it has extremely dire language and I'm going to get right into it because um, I have a lot to talk about with this report. So I'll get back to this diagram. Um, it's one of the key, um, part of one of the key diagrams in the report. Basically, um, a Twitter, a tweet came across from me, which I retweeted. The, so follow me on Twitter if you're not at Paul H. Beckwith. And if you haven't joined Twitter, I highly recommend that you join it just for the climate stuff alone. The UN just released a landmark climate change report. Here's the grim timeline it gives us. So let's see what the report. Now there's loads and loads of uh, press releases today on this report. I'll show you a couple. The UN, uh, here's the grim timeline it gives us. Okay, so here's one uh, <coughs> which, I, which was linked to in Twitter. In the time it will take a current fifth grader student to graduate high school, the world needs to realize massive, rapid, and sustained cuts to greenhouse gas emissions. In order to yank the planet back from the brink, we're hanging on to the brink with our fingernails, or we may have gone over already and we need to flap our wings and get back on to the brink. The climate change consequences are disastrous. Canada must slash carbon emissions by almost half in the next seven years to prevent that same fifth grader from living out her old age in a world with increased floods, fires, crop failures, forced migration, and infectious disease outbreaks. It sounds like all that's happening already, right? Um, so half by in the next seven years by 2030 and to zero by 2050 according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Synthesis Report. In short, our world needs climate action on all fronts, everything, everywhere, all at once, um, said the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres at a news conference for the report's release. He suggested wealthy countries such as Canada need to reach net zero even sooner than 2050 by 2040. This can be done, he says. Some have already set a target as early as 2035. While Guterres referenced a science fiction movie in his remarks, the solutions to this crisis are both well understood, already in use, and in some cases, almost embarrassingly simple. Protecting intact forests, wetlands, and other natural ecosystems. I talked about how important this is to protect water as well. This would just have massive payoffs. Solar and wind are contributing energy to power grids, even in fossil fuel friendly places like Texas. Okay, so this report is the world's current most comprehensive assessment of the current state of climate change. The last synthesis report came out in 2014, and it was a major impetus for the Paris Agreement, which was, uh, which was at the COP in 2015. Um, this synthesis report, it puts everything together. It concludes years of work by hundreds of scientists around the globe, and will lay the stage for a different kind of momentous meeting later this year, the conference at which nations will assess their Paris commitment. So he's talking about the the COP uh, in Dubai this year. Climate change is the story of inequality. The 10% of households with the highest per capita emissions contribute at least a third of global consumption-based household greenhouse gas emissions. The bottom half of households contribute only 15%. So this is part of one of the figures here. So you see the temperature increasing over time, the scales here, you know, up to possibly four degrees Celsius by 2100. You know, here's where we are in 2020. The 2011 to 2020 average was about 1.1 warmer than 1850 to 1900 average. If you just take, uh, you know, a couple of years around, around now, it's at least 1.2 degrees warmer. 
Uh, we're heading into a powerful El Nino. I think that could take us over 1.5 for a year or two if we have this super um, El Nino. Um, and here's somebody born in 1950, and you can see um, the um, you can see them 70 years old in 2020. Um, you know, looking at it, somebody born now. Okay, now you can see the different color bands from all the, there's five scenarios, very high to very low. Okay, uh, as they age, as they go through life, if uh, we still have a habitable planet, then uh, the worst scenarios, you know, uh, very, very uh, huge, huge warming, you know, up to four degrees. The, the best scenarios uh, still, you know, uh, between two and 2.5, you know, if we actually get our act together. So we're looking at very dire future. If you're born in 1980, um, 70, you'll be 70 in 2050, and you still see lots of these impacts. Between 2010 and 2020, deaths from floods, droughts, and storms were 15 times higher in regions that were highly vulnerable to climate change, places that are far more likely to be poor and underdeveloped with fewer resources to adapt. Some parts of the world are almost are already close to irreversible changes, including thawing Arctic permafrost. Guterres said, I thank the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change for showing the fact-based, science-grounded way out of this climate mess. We have never been better equipped to solve the climate challenge, but we must move into warp speed climate action now. Okay, so uh, that was one article. You know, here's another article. World on thin ice as UN climate report gives stark warning. Um, you know, the uh, basically humanity is on thin ice. That ice is melting fast. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, basically the window is closing. It says pretty much what the other article says. You know, the report is based on data from a few years ago, which is generally the case with the IPCC report. The calculations about fossil fuel projects already in the pipeline do not include the increase of, in coal and natural gas after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Okay, many European countries increased their coal and natural gas consumption. Um, and it comes a week, this report, it was only a week ago that the Biden administration approved the huge Willow oil drilling project in Alaska which could produce up to 180,000 barrels of oil a day from the North Slope. Okay, so, so let's look at the, um, let's go into the details. What, what's the, what does the UN come out with here? So if you go to their, um, if you click on the link in, in, in any of the press releases that you see, it'll probably come to this page, the AR6 Assessment Report 6 Synthesis Report, Climate Change 2023, okay, so this, there, there was a session in Interlake in Sweden, and out of that swesh, session came this report, um, and so the, the, there's a synthesis report, it's, it's based on working group one, two, and three, th and three special reports, um, so it's based on a lot of uh, work that's been done previous, and uh, the Basically, if you click on the report itself, um, they, they don't have the long report out yet. They don't have the full volume report. They've got the summary, the figures, the headline statements, a press release, and a presentation. So I'll show you those things that um, have been released today. So the press release, uh, which just came out today. There are multiple feasible and effective options to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and adapt to human-caused climate change and they are available now. Okay, well, believe that or not, um, you know, we got to try. we got to try something. Um, mainstreaming effective and equitable climate action will not only reduce losses and damages for nature and people, it will also provide wider benefits. Okay, um, so they still think that if we act now, we can still secure a livable, sustainable future for all. In 2018, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, they highlighted the unprecedented scale of the challenge required to keep warming to 1.5. Okay, and, uh, you know, we're 1.1 if you take the century, if you take the, a decadal average and compare it to um, the climatology from 1850 to 1900. 
Um, but of course, every increment of warming results in rapidly escalating hazards. It doesn't go up linearly. Um, loss and damages and sharp focus. Um, about half, almost half of the world's population lives in regions that are highly vulnerable to climate change. And in the last decade, deaths from floods, dread, floods, droughts, and storms were 15 times higher in highly vulnerable regions. Okay, so anyway, it goes on, but I'm going to, let's have a look at the, the report. I mean, they talk about sustainable development conservation of about 30 to 50 percent of the earth's land fresh water and ocean to ensure a healthy climate healthy planet changes in food sector electricity transport you know changing everything basically and i focused on water in the last couple of videos but uh you know it's uh we're, we're on the cliff cliff edge i think we've gone over anyway they did a they did a um powerpoint uh little presentation here to, uh, you know, what did they talk about in the synthesis report? And this was just released today. So this is a great picture. It shows the road. It looks like it's going off into the sky. You know, it's just very foggy. It's in uh, Korea. Fog opening the dawn. Great photo. The state of knowledge. Okay, so this synthesis report, it synthesizes all of these other reports, like working group one, Climate Change 2021, the physical science basis. This is the uh, working group one, like I said. Climate Change 2022, impacts adapt adaptation and vulnerability. Um, and the mitigation report, there's always a three. It came out in 2022 also. And then since then, there's been three special reports. One on the ocean and cryosphere in a changing climate. One on climate change and land use and another one on global warming of 1.5 compared to 1 point compared to 2. The warning, the pace and scale of climate action are insufficient to tackle climate change. Adverse impacts from human caused change will intensify water scarcity and food production, huge huge issue. Uh, and these are hitting us very very fast. Uh, as I said about water scarcity, 40% scarcity, 40% less than required in the next seven years by 2030. Health and well-being, this is the coronavirus. Uh, this is, um, you know, there's different symbols. This is this is uh, migration. This is mental health, I believe. Look, this is, I think, wildfires, uh, lightning uh, hitting your head. <laughs> Cities, settlements, and infrastructure, you know, flooding, damaged bridges, um, you know, more and more money being spent. And then ecosystem structure, you know, this is the changes in the timing, you know, when when flowers come out, when the animals are there to that eat the flowers, those if those timings are off, we get mass uh, mortalities. Um, and, uh, you know, this is the marine and this is the wetland. OK, this is just a high level thing. The extremes, of course, are becoming more widespread and pronounced with every increment of warm, warming. It's completely very highly nonlinear system. Now they still have a hope. Some call it hopium, but they want to mainstream effective and equitable climate action now to reduce losses and damages for nature and pe people. Climate action provides co-benefits. Okay, there you know it's the right thing to do. We need multiple feasible and effective options to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and adapt to human caused climate change that's already in the pipeline. So the challenge, we got to cut emissions quickly. We got to slash fossil fuel emissions sharply, quickly, right away, yesterday. We've got to scale up practices and infrastructure to enhance resilient, cut global greenhouse gas emissions by nearly half by 2030. I mean, how is this, they're, even, how, they're talking about this. I mean, is, is this even physically possible? Like it's 2023. You know, I mean, they have to say something, I guess. Action required along numerous dimensions. They can't just say, here, we're completely screwed. You know, uh, they got to say something to try to keep up uh, hope. The path forward is clear. Tried and tested options available now need to be designed for diverse contexts, need to be scaled up and applied widely. Fairness is one of the solutions. Millions of people are exposed to acute 
food insecurity and reduced water security. Those who contributed the least to climate change are often the most vulnerable to the impacts, the biggest impacts in parts of Africa, Asia, Central South America, um, small island states, uh, least, uh, least developed countries, the Arctic. People in highly vulnerable areas are up to 15 times more likely to die in floods, drought, storms compared to those in, most resilient, in the most resilient uh, places. Um, okay, we have to increase financing for climate action, but the money can't just be pissed away. It has to go to the right places, the key places. They're, they're arguing for three to six times the current climate investment. They say there's enough global financing to rapidly reduce emissions. You know, there always seems to be money from governments to bail out banks. I mean, I think the government has printed a, over $300 billion in the last week after the Silicon Valley uh, bank collapsed to try to stabilize the system. Other banks have collapsed. There's been run on banks. I think the Swiss, uh, Swiss banks were affected just recently. Um, developing countries need external funding to meet the adaptation needs. Options are available to scale up financing. Climate resilient development needs to be done. Reduce poverty and hunger, clean energy, water and air. You know, these are all high level uh, goals. Many consider them pipe dreams now. Enablers for effective climate action. Political commitment, inclusive governance, international cooperation, yeah, um, effective ecosystem stewardship and sharing of diverse knowledge, human factors, you know, trust, recognition, collaboration. You know, these. Th this is very, very high level. You know, in fact, this is not the reality of today's situation at all. Our choices will reverberate for hundreds, even thousands of years, even, you know, for the rest of the human um human uh, experiment on this planet. Um, now, I'm going to talk to the, um, yeah, so I'm going to talk to the figures here, okay? So there's uh, the figures in the report. Um, there's actually, yeah, so there's, uh, there's a bunch of figures, and let's talk about the figures because, you know, reading any paper or any report, you know, go to the go to the figures first. See what the illustrations show. So again, there's some uh, high level sort of nature to this, but let's see what they're saying. The adverse impacts from human caused climate change um, will continue to intensify. Observe widespread and substantial impacts and related losses and damages attributed to climate change. So we have adverse impacts. These are a mix of adverse and positive. There's a green slash. Okay, so, you know, water availability and food production, they're completely tied in, right? You, if you don't have water, you can't grow food. You know, when you export food, you're actually exporting water because of the embodied uh, water. So we t I talked all about that in the last two videos and the UN water conference is occurring um, uh, later this week. So physical water availability, this is fresh water available. Agriculture and crop production, okay, um, is, you know, uh, th these, um, these, these climate effects that are widespread and they're, they're impacting agriculture great, with great adversity, okay? Animal and livestock, health and productivity, um, and fisheries yields and aquaculture production. So all of these things are affected by climate change, of course, the, the health and well-being of humans. Infectious diseases, the vectors are increasing, so there's more likelihood, you know, when you get uh, species migration, you get species moving into areas that they're not used to being in, and that can spread and cause more interaction between species and cause, you know, a great upsurge in infectious diseases, such as coronavirus. Heat, malnutrition, and harm from wildfires, okay? Wildfires uh, affecting, um, affect, you know, affecting the air and taking out ecosystems. Um, the extra heat when, when crops are growing and it's too hot, they're, they're lacking nutrients, so you can eat them and you still have malnutrition. Um, of course, mental health is a huge deal, right? And I talked recently about the survey of Canadian students and the survey of 
you know, uh, like a thousand young students, ages 16 to young adults and kids, ages 16 to 25, in both in Canada and in 10 other countries. And many think we're doomed and uh, there's not much of a future and they're not having wanting to have kids, etc. All these things tie into mental health. Displacement. More and more people are being displaced around the planet. There's huge migration. It's not just of plants and animals. Cities and settlements and infrastructure. Inland flooding and damages. Flood storm induced damages in coastal areas. Damages to infrastructure, you know, bridges being washed out, etc. Damages to key economic sectors, causing uh, huge drops in economic output. And then, of course, biodiversity and ecosystems, both terrestrial, freshwater, and ocean. And um, I went to the conference on biodiversity in Montreal in December, and I uh, was there for about four days, I guess, and uh, talked about that extensively also. The impacts are driven by changes in multiple physical climate conditions. So attribution of, of observed physical climate changes to human influence, increase in agricultural and ecological drought, okay? Increase in fire, fires and fire weather, increase in compound flooding, so flood after flood after flood. Compound events are very serious because areas that get hit by some extreme weather event or climate event, uh, they have no time to recover. They're often hit again and again and they just can't rebuild. Increase in heavy precipitation. I've talked about the jet streams and storms passing slower over the earth, etc. Glacier ret retreat, global sea level rise, and upper ocean acidification, stratification of the oceans, increase in hot extremes. Now, this is the what I showed you at the beginning of the video. This shows the extent to which current and future generations will experience a hotter and different world. And that depends on choices now and in the near term. So here we go. Here's where we are in 2020, 2023, actually. You know, the temperature from the, the decade, the decade to 2011 to 2020, about 1.1 C warmer. Individual years, 1.2 C warmer. We've got a strong El Nino coming. That's going to notch us up. Um, there's five, uh, five different emission scenarios. Of course, the warming continues beyond 2100 with the upper ones. And you can look at a kid being born in 2020 and see how their entire life is, is being affected by climate change. You know, if they make it to 70, if civilization, humans make it to that long on the earth, then, uh, you know, we could be four degrees Celsius warmer than normal. You know, most people wonder, you know, how could humanity actually survive if we're, you know, at these three or four degree levels, you know, born in 1980, luckily, you know, you had some years unaffected so much by climate, but now the climate is affecting you significantly. Even people today that were born in 1950, they're bearing, they're, they're bearing the ill effects of climate change. So it affects everybody, it affects all of humanity. Okay, this is, uh, this is another image here. Okay, so with every increment of global warming, regional changes in mean climate and extremes become more widespread and pronounced. So, so this is a global warming level above the 1850 to 1900 climatology or average. Here we are, 1.1. That's between 2011 and 2020, the average. Um, and uh, the world at two would be here. The world at three would be here, the world at four here. The last time global surface temperature was sustained at or above 2.5 C was over 3 million years ago. So this is the annual hottest day temperature change. Um, in, and this is degrees Celsius um, here. The annual hottest temp day temperature is projected to increase most 1.5 to two times the global warming level in some mid-latitude and semi-arid regions and in the South American monsoon region. Okay, so you can look at the, um, you know, if the global warming level is these, then this is what the world is going to look like. Temperatures here in the Arctic, you know, seven degrees. This is probably a, a conservative estimate. I think they'll be much higher because there'll be no snow and ice to act as a, a, a cool a coolant for the Arctic. 
So it just gets worse and worse, right? I mean, this is where we're heading. Annual mean total column. So, so if you take a column of soil all the way down as far as the soil goes, it's some moisture change. And you can see, you know, look at the drying out here of Europe. It's already started. It's, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Okay, we're losing, it, how, Europe will no, not be able to support anywhere near the number of people um, as we, uh, you know, move into the future. Same with uh, South America and South Af Southern Africa and, uh, you know, parts of the U.S., the U.S. Uh, Southwest specifically. Okay, those are areas where, pe you know, people won't be able to live you know, have a decent way of life in those places long term if they can live there at all. The annual wettest day precipitation changes. Um, you can see where the water is is more more precipitation, but most of the land, you know, the the land areas here, um, you know, many, you know, some. It looks like many of them do have more precipitation here. The wettest day is projected to increase in almost all continental regions, even regions where projected annual mean so soil moisture declines. So, so we, this is a sort of a, a break, a divergence. Although the soil is getting drier and drier and drier, you know, that the, um, there's still going to be um, in, intense rainfall in some days. And if the soil is really dry, then most of that is overland flooding. We've got to figure out how, ways to capture that overland flooding water and not let it just go into the rivers and into the ocean we need to we need it to replenish the water tables etc okay let's go on to the next uh figure here let's expand it a little bit okay so future climate change is projected to increase the severity uh, okay What's going on here? I'm not, uh, okay. There we go. And now let's do a control plus until I bring it to control minus. Okay, so it fits on the screen. So future climate change is projected to increase the severity of impacts across natural and human systems and will increase regional differences. Okay. Um, yeah, this is not a, uh, not the changes aren't equal across the board. There's huge latitudinal dependent. So this shows the risk of species losses. This is a percentage of animal species and seagrasses exposed to potentially dangerous temperature conditions. At 1.5 C, already lots of regions bracketing the equator on the land. Um, two degrees C, you know, much, much worse. Um, and these, these colors are percentage of, of species at risk of being lost. You know, three degrees and four degrees are horrific. You know, look at the up to 100% of various species losses in regions. It's just too hot for animals to, to live. Um, marine heat waves, land heat waves, you know, just a, a nightmarish, apocalyptic-like uh, world. This is heat, humidity, risk to human health, okay? Remember a wet bulb temperature, um, okay? So this, is, uh, this shows the temperature bands expected in the future and the areas, you know, heat, humid, risks to humans. This is the number of days, days per year where combined temperature and humidity conditions pose a risk to mortality of mortality to individuals. And you can see, you know, look at these areas here. These areas will essentially become uninhabitable because of, it'll just be too hot and humid, the combination for people to live. Okay, so people will have no choice but to migrate to the, to the poles. Uh, food production impacts. Okay, so this is, um, this is, uh, there, there's maize yield, you know, this is corns, um, and you can see the yields dropping significantly, the dark purple areas. Uh, you know, we're talking about minus, uh, you know, even these areas, minus 15, minus 20% to minus 40% loss of crop yields. How are we going to feed the world's populations with these sort of conditions? You know, you can look, there's some areas that actually get more yield and those are perhaps areas that, uh, you know, you want to be uh, living uh, if it comes to that. 
fisheries yields, uh, you know, huge drop, you know, again, bracketed around the equator. Um, you know, th this is changes percent in maximum catch potential. So how are we going to feed the world in the future? This is a, the risks are increasing. Climate change is highly nonlinear. The risks are increasing with every increment of warming. So here's where we are. This is, this is temperature. Um, and here's where we are, 1.1 degree warmer than the 1850 to 1900 average. That's the average between 2011 and 2020. And here's the different scenarios. There's the five scenarios that we were talking about. This is where business as usual is right now, at the very highest, taking us to over four degrees Celsius by 2100. And these are global reasons for concern. And this compares uh, the AR6, which is the 2022 report, assessment report six of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It compares the report, the AR5, which was about uh, eight years earlier. Normally they come out every seven years or so. Um, and you can see the risks are substantially higher. You know, we're finding out problems occur, like you, this is unique and threatened systems. Problems occur at much lower temperatures than we thought. And we head into these very high risk impact areas at temperatures that we're, we're heading right into. Extreme weather events increasing greatly. Distribution of impacts increasing all over the world, global aggregate impacts and large scale singular events happening. Okay, the risks also differ by the system. So we have land based systems and ocean and coastal ecosystems. So land based systems. Um, this is uh, the wildfire damage on the way up, increase in the length of the fire season, fires happening further and further at higher latitudes, affecting more and more people. Perma permafrost degradation, great risk increasing, biodiversity loss, we know about that, you know, we're head, it's like the sixth great extinction. Dry land water scarcity, getting really bad in some places, think especially Europe sticks out right now. Tree mortalities, um, getting higher and higher, carbon loss from what were bef sinks before getting worse, and then ocean and coastal ecosystems, warm water corals, well, coral reefs declining, you know, here, 99, over 99% expected at a couple degrees, coral reefs declining by 70 to 90%, you know, at 1.5 degrees Celsius with marine heat waves, kelp being threatened, Seagrass meadows, these are some of the areas that have, you know, great carbon uh, capture. Epipelagic, uh, this is uh, near the surface of the ocean. Um, you know, mangroves would probably be in this category. Rocky shores and salt marshes being impinged on and affected by sea level rise. This is global mean sea level rise relative to 1900. You know, here's where we are now, and here's the, where we're expecting going with the different projections. You know, I think we'll be way up here by 2070, seven meters by 2070. I'll still hold to my projection, and that's with catastrophic uh, things occurring, huge ice sheet collapse, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these are, uh, you know, we get urban atoll islands being hit hard, Arctic communities hit hard by sea level large tropical agricultural deltas being inundated with water, resource rich coastal cities being hit hard, and then adaptation and socioeconomic pathways affect the levels of climate related risks. So, you know, if we, if we continue along with our limited adaptation, we get huge effects of risks. If we do proactive adaptation, we can mitigate some of the risks. Um, food insecurity, for example, very bad and high risk in, in the SSP3 and in the SSP1. SSP1 is a world with low population growth, high income, reduced inequalities, food produced in low greenhouse gas emission systems, effective land. You know, this is doing stuff right. We can mitigate the risk, but we're, this is doing everything wrong, which is the path that we're on, unfortunately. Limited warming to 1.5 C and 2 degrees C. Limiting warming to these numbers involves rapid, deep, and in most cases, immediate greenhouse gas emissions. We, 
we looks like we've we'll probably surpass this in a few years if we have a super El Nino. So here's where we are with the gigatons of CO2 equivalent emissions. Okay, that includes all of the greenhouse gases uh, uh, weighted in depending on their global warming potential. And uh, here's where we're heading. These are, this is, these are the NDCs that we've already, you know, and they're leading to much higher temperatures. In order to limit warming to two or even think about, this is a pipe dream, 1.5, but you know, two is probably a pipe dream. We have to slash uh, emissions. Um, we have to bring CO2 down. We have to bring methane down. Um, it's not happening, right? This is greenhouse gas emissions by sector. Um, you know, so we can, you divide it up into transport, energy supply, land use, use change. All of those things have to be improved in order to have any hope to bring down emissions. And then uh, let's see what this is. Okay, I think this is the last... Uh, image here and let's go uh let's do uh control plus there is a rapidly narrowing window yeah how how narrow does it get but like it's just uh you know it's like <laughs> rapidly narrowing window i'd say you know it's cement the window's cemented in already uh but anyway i'm showing this report so conditions that enable individual and collective actions you know it talks about high level things governance finance etc and things that constrain action poverty you know countries are spending more and more money on on repairing stuff that's damaged so they don't have they're, they're running out of time and window to do anything the idea is to try to attain these sdgs sustainable development goals by 2030 um, this is climate resilient development. So good is going up, you know, opportunities missed, you know, warming limited below 1.5. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, and then there's, you know, there's shocks occurring and this stuff is very bad. This is where we're heading, the very bad, you know, can we change? You know, it's, it's hard not to be very skeptical about all this. Outcomes characterizing development pathways. We need to low emissions. We need system system thinking, transformation of the system to lower climate risk, including equity and justice and sustainable development goals. These are all becoming sort of fantasy things at this point. You know, we're here where we are and what we're doing is high emissions, entrenched systems, maladaptation, increased climate risk, ecosystem degradation, right? We just can't seem to get our act together. And uh, there's multiple uh, opportunities for scaling up climate action. So let's have a look at some of these things. Uh, okay. So, you know, these are um, what we have here. These are potential contributions to net emission reduction by 2030. Gigatons of CO2 equivalent per year. Um, things like solar and wind and uh, reducing methane, geothermal, nuclear. Nuclear should be huge, okay? I mean, I showed you the Nate Hagen's paper, you know, 1,400 kilowatt hours for equivalent, energy equivalent in one barrel of oil. You know, a human doing manual labor would have to work for 11 years to match that energy. So, you know, it's just the energy density is huge on fossil fuels. We based our whole society on it. The only thing that has higher energy density and by far is nuclear, nuclear fuel. But uh, so, you know, how can we, is it possible to replace our baseline with solar and wind? I mean, although these are increasing huge amounts, fossil fuels, coal, oil, natural gas are still increasing more and more. So if you look at Nate Hagen's paper, you know, there's no way we can avoid a collapse. You know, perhaps if we went to nuclear full bore, you know, built nuclear plants everywhere. Um, and then land, water, and food. So there's energy supply. Energy is everything. Land, water, and food. Um, different ways of, of uh, you know, trying to improve things. Sustainable. Uh, this is settlements and infrastructure. Uh, you know, ways to try to improve things uh, and uh, society, livelihood and economy. Um, 
other things and you know all of these there's no one solution you know all of these things can kind of work at the pie but we're just not doing it at the moment you know could we could we change i don't know uh it doesn't i you know it is what it is you know the potential of demand side mitigation options food down 44 percent. we waste tons of food right now land transport if we electrify buildings industry electricity additional electrification that's as long as our electricity generation is from renewable sources so there's all of those in there and then you know there's headline statements um and you can kind of look uh you know I'll, I'll just have a quick look at the report i mean i'm not going to go into all of these sort of you know headline statements but a lot of work's being done on this so this is the synthesis report 36 pages um you know it's got all the figures in that i just showed you basically this synthesis report um uh of the ipcc six assessment report it summarizes the state of knowledge of climate change its widespread impacts and risks its climate change mitigation and adaptation it integrates the main findings of the six assessment report ar6 based on the three working groups one two three and the three special reports and they divide it into into different parts which is current status and trends is the a future climate uh, change risks and long-term responses b and c responses in the near term okay so anyway i'm not uh, let's just go through some of the key uh, things in here um yeah so these are kind of uh you know you don't need to go to a horror movie you can just uh you know read this report and uh be uh you know yeah it's gonna it will you can't forget this stuff once you read it so anyway maybe just watch my video and then uh wait till the you know to main to to maintain a stable uh psyche so this is a long you know the, the ipcc reports they all have this type of statement the numbers just change so human activities principally through emissions of greenhouse gases have unequivocally caused global warming. Global surface temperature has reached 1.1 above the 1850 to 1900 average in 2011 to 2020. Um, global greenhouse gas emissions have continued to increase with unequal historical and ongoing contributions. Um, and, you know, and it's from unst unsustainable energy use, land use, land use changes, lifestyles, patterns of consumption and production between and with, within countries and among individuals. What they don't say here is it's increasing at rates faster than it's ever increased before. And then they talk about global surface temperature, the likely range, the likelihood, net anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions. 59 plus or minus 6.6 .6 gigatons of CO2 equivalent in 2019, 12% higher than 2010, 54% higher than 1990. So it's all happening now, right? We're putting out more and more and it doesn't take that long, you know, what, a few decades to, to have emissions equal to all of the previous emissions in human history since, what, 1750 why you know all of these greenhouse gases are causing widespread and rapid changes in the atmosphere ocean cryosphere and biosphere every part of earth it's affecting weather and climate extremes in every region across the globe um vulnerable communities who have historically contributed the least to current climate change are disproportionately affected approximately 3.3 <coughs> to 3.6 billion people live in context you know this is almost half the earth vulner highly vulnerable to climate change substantial damages increasingly irreversible losses reduced food security water, reduced water security basically uh makes the effort to reach, achieve the sustainable development goals uh you know impossible what well, says hinders hinders them i say it's impossible um uh, what else okay adverse impacts and i talked about this figure 
you know, this is a very, this is a new image and I think it's effective because it shows, you know, what happens, you know, you have a kid now and this is what they're gonna, gonna see. So many young people are choosing not to. Adaptation planning and implementation has progressed across all sectors. Um, despite progress, there's big gaps. Yeah, I mean, how do you adapt to like sea level rise taking out your coastal city, for example? Well, you, you have managed retreat. I think we should stop talking about sustainability. We should talk about managed retreat and survival. You know, we should call a, a spade a spade. And uh, the use of scenarios and model pathways in the report. Um, yeah, they call them SSPs, shared socioeconomic pathways now. Um, you know, they keep changing them, making it harder to re refer back to previous ones, and they're supposed to be improving, etc. Um, policies and laws addressing mitigation have consistently expanded. Um, you know, make, warming will exceed, well, look, warming, making it likely that warming will exceed 1.5. Well, we know the warming per decade, and we know the present temperature, so you know it's it's not rocket science it's just simple math we're gonna blow over past uh we're gonna blow past the the numbers um this is good news from 2010 to 2019 there's been sustained decre sustained decreases in the unit costs of solar energy wind energy lithium-ion batteries large increases in their deployment okay so th that's heading the right way um, there's still a huge emissions gap between the N nationally determined contributions and uh, the ability to limit warming. I mean, we're heading, I think, to 2.8 with the present ones. Well, that's better than 4 or 5, but it's nowhere near 1.5 or 2. Um, continued greenhouse gas emissions will lead to increasing global warming with the best estimate of reaching 1.5 in the near term. Every increment of global warming will intensify multiple and concurrent hazards. Okay, those, the risk, uh, those, uh, they're called burning embers. You know, the, 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 the vertical bars with red at the very top, right? It's like a candle. Okay, we would need deep, rapid, and sustained reductions in greenhouse gas emissions to slow down global warming over the next few decades. You know, we need to capture carbon. We need solar radiation management. That's, you know, they should be talking about that. I mean, that's the reality of the situation. Okay, I've shown this diagram. Anyway, this is all open source. So just have, have a look at this stuff. You know, I can, I can go into more detail about... Here, here's the burning embers. These things look like candles, right? And they're glowing more and more brightly. The risks are getting greater and greater. Okay. Uh, the good news is uh, this video is almost over. Okay, um, the likelihood of abrupt and or irreversible changes occur with higher global warming levels, the probability of low likelihood outcomes associated with potentially very large adverse effects increases with higher global warming. Okay, these are tipping points, uh, thresholds being crossed, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, the likelihood and impacts of abrupt and or reversible, irreversible changes in the climate system including changes triggered when tipping points are reached, increase with further global warming. You know, we're looking at crossing tipping points with uh, the Amazon rainforest, with the Arctic ice, you know, uh, with the uh, glacier melt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, so you can, uh, you know, you can have a look at this stuff, uh, right? Yet another new report here saying how bad it is and, uh, you know, the media will talk about it a lot over the next few days and then, uh, you know, it'll be basically thrown in the dustbin like the rest of the report until, uh, you know, the new report in a number of years says it's much worse and we have no time. There's still a narrow window of avoiding it, you know, and then when we pass two degrees Celsius, they'll say, well, we have a narrow window of bringing it back down to 1.5. It's sort of the human condition, you know, always thinking hope, 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 you know, without action. It's just, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it, it, it's just not going to happen without action. Anyway, um, 
yeah, so this just came out today. I had to talk about it. Please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net, and donating to my PayPal to support my research and videos as I bring the cutting edge science of abrupt climate system change to you. Try to connect the dots, try to figure out, you know, where we'll be, say, in five years, 10 years, 20 years. You know, if, if, if we're, uh, you know, it's getting, it's getting easier and easier to do these projections, the more dire it gets, right? You could just throw up your hands and say, oh, okay, well, we're, we're done for. But, you know, again, we, we can't do that as humans. We have to keep trying, you know, uh, you know, I guess the miracle uh, for me would be, let's take the military budgets of the world and let's throw them into addressing climate change just for a year or two or, or take the top three or four billionaires or you know i think we should confiscate all the money of the billionaires and put it all into into fighting climate change how about that um you know i mean how can anybody be worth billions of dollars like what's the point right the inequality uh, itself just destroys humanity destroys our systems but anyway that would be too logical to do but uh Anyway, um, yeah, so have a nice day or evening or whatever, and uh, until my next video. You know, I like putting out videos now quite rapidly because I don't want you to get too depressed over, over any one video. I keep, you know, need to throw other stuff at you to redirect. So redirect your thinking. But anyway, uh, so this report that just came out today, um, yeah, you know, is it another yet another report that's just going to be ignored or, you know, maybe one of these reports people actually get up and do something about. Anyway, thanks again for listening and uh, we'll chat soon. Bye for now.